veteran broadcaster Sir Michael Parkinson, who interviewed some of the world's biggest stars, has died. He was 88. Tributes have flooded in for the man who perfected the art of the chat show, combining a relaxed style with a journalistic curiosity. Muhammad Ali, Peter Kay, Olivia Newton-John. Stars of the stage and screen of sport and politics flocked to his programme. His long-standing friend, the former cricket umpire Dickie Bird, spoke of his loss. One of the biggest names in British television, Sir Michael Parkinson, has died at the age of 88. In a career spanning seven decades, he interviewed some of the world's greatest stars on his chat show, including the legendary boxer Muhammad Ali, Sir Elton John and Dame Judi Dench. The BBC's Director General, Tim Davey, described Sir Michael as truly one of a kind and the king of the chat show. David Silito looks back at his life. Get fed up with each other. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> I call him Golden Balls, you know, now because I mean. <laughs> Did you ever say, you dirty rat? Never. Jimmy Cagney, Orson Welles, Jimmy Stewart. These were distant, mysterious screen gods until Parkinson Evening and welcome. brought them into your living room. The fact is that you're a crowd puller, and Frazier's not, is he? Why is well, that? Well, number one, he's ugly. His interviews with Muhammad Ali were unmissable. He has no rhythm, no footwork, no class, he cannot talk. <laughs> and who told him he could sing? He could sing. But of all those 2,000 or so guests, one always haunted him. I'm only remembered for one thing, I was attacked by a sodding <laughs> emu. It's not aggressive. Not much. <laughs> <laughs> Rod Hull and Emu rather punctured the suave TV persona. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Shirley McLean. The show, with its relaxed late night style, was also a springboard. I hope I can get away with this. It's a beauty. It was a program that could transform a career. It's a sort of substitute for tattoos. I'm frightened to get a tattoo. Yeah. Billy Connolly appeared 15 times. I'm at the oyster that went to a discotheque and pulled a muscle. <laughs> They became good friends. He says, I need somewhere to park my bike. <laughs> you know better as Betty Davis. For Hollywood star Betty Davis, there was almost a standing ovation for just being on the show. Thank you. Thank you. The programme could in a moment swing from highbrow debate to risque flirtation. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Oh, my, my. And occasionally, some of the questions may have discomforted the interviewee. Let's talk about nudity. Helen Mirren was less than impressed by this line of inquiry. But do you find, in fact, that this, what could be best described as your equipment, in fact, hinders you, perhaps, in that pursuit? You're wary of journalists. Meg Ryan was also another an frosty moment. After. In other words, if you were me, what would you do now? Well, just wrap it up. <laughs> In the 80s, he was briefly part of the ill-fated Gang of Five, who launched ITV's new breakfast programme before returning to the BBC. An indication I'm leaving the company. I might. He's a practising homeopath, as a matter of fact. <laughs> there were moments, but it was now just one of many chat shows on an interview circuit. I'm pretty sure that's what he said he was. <laughs> where everyone seemed to have something to say. But there were still moments, for instance, this candid interview with George Michael talking about his arrest in America. I responded to a, you know, very handsome, um, tall, uh, <laughs> good-looking um, American cop. You know, they don't send Columbo in there to do that. But all this Hollywood glamour was something of a contrast with his childhood. He was the son of a Yorkshire miner. My generation was the first that actually challenged the assumption that if you were born into a mining family, you followed your dad's footsteps down to the pit. Right, play forward. Well played. A proud Yorkshireman, he loved his cricket. Not only was he a true friend, he was a dear friend. One of his school pals was Dickie Bird, who would go on to become one of cricket's best-known umpires. They spoke only yesterday and said their goodbyes. I remember him for his... Most of all, of course, his friendship. He always had a smile on his face. 
And every time we met, of course, we talked about cricket. And that he loved cricket. And do you know, his father had one ambition for him in life, and that was to play for Yorkshire. And at the end, it was his father's very Yorkshire judgment that came to mind. Just before he died, he said to me, he said, you've done well and you met some big stars. I said, I had. He said, you made a bob or two without breaking sweat. I admitted that was also true. Good lad, he said, but to think on, it's not like playing for Yorkshire, is it? <laughs> it wasn't, but once or twice, it got pretty damn close. Good night. <laughs> The broadcaster, Sir Michael Parkinson, who's died at the age of 88. Well, David, whose report you saw there, is with me now. I mean, you think of Sir Michael Parkinson, you think of the consummate chat show host, don't you? Um, what's remarkable is how many people have been remembering today who had no chance of actually watching those interviews. It's like 50 years ago. Um, and they have been sharing clips of interviews. If you think of the thousands of interviews there have been, we, why do we remember these? Well, Michael Parkinson always said he was lucky. There was a special moment when he said, he looked up the stairs and he said, ladies and gentlemen, Fred Astaire. He said he could hardly believe he was saying that. There was this l incredible moment when there were Hollywood stars were released on contracts and they could appear in your front room and they'd be talking. Um, but it was also Jacob Bronowski, it was Orson Welles, it was Bette Midler. He would go from high seriousness to high comedy in a moment. Um, and you realise that there are all these sort of landmark moments, that these clips that are being shown around there, um, and it felt so effortless at the time. I was allowed to stay up late and watch it in those early days. Um, and it seemed the ultimate in sophistication, and it didn't, never seemed forced or strange. And you thought, oh, what is this? And you realise, well, it was the true professionalism of somebody who's a real journalist, but liked his show business, liked his jazz, liked his cricket. Um, and created true TV moment. Indeed. Many thanks.